showing it to you. Lions fans, everybody out there uh, that's supporting this team, the One Pride family, um, all the YouTubers that's doing it across the land. Um, good morning, Okuda Matata. <laughs> uh, Detroit Lions go in the draft yesterday and take the number three pick with Jeff Okuda. Jeff Okuda is officially a Detroit Lions, and I am absolutely happy about that. Um, you know, a lot of us know that, you know, this guy was the perfect fit for the Detroit Lions. Um, some of us wanted uh, Simmons at three. Uh, me, personally, I really didn't mind Okuda. Like I said, I did my extensive research, so, um, but a lot of people just don't like the fact that it's a corner at three, which... That type of stuff, I don't care about. Um, if the player can ball, he can ball. Simple as that. Um, and this player checked every box 10 out of 10. So I don't see what's wrong with that. Um, you know, a lot of people overreacting and overthinking. Uh, we're in a situation where we at home and we have nothing to do. So overthinking is a common thing right now. Um, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I can respect that. I just don't want to hear all the continuous whining uh, <laughs> about the Lions taking a really, really, really good player. Um, so it is what it is. Um, man, day two. Day two of the draft. First of all, let's stick to day one. Um, Lions took Okuda. Redskins went ahead to snatch our dreams away with taking Chase. Um, but Simmons... Uh, Man, a lot of people were really bent out of shape about that. And my thing is, Okuda, to me, is still a better player than Simmons. Simmons does more. He's more versatile. But as a better player in college, Okuda was a better player. And you can argue with that all you want to. Um, but that's just that. So, you know, as far as the trading back situation go, a lot of us wanted to see Lions trade back, but after getting the details from Bob Quinn, not only him, but Adam Schefter and, you know, the other big guys on uh, Twitter, uh, there was nothing available. Uh, the, the Dolphins pulled back and pulled out of that situation. Uh, they didn't want to give up the fifth pick. So it's really nothing that you can do but take your pick at third. It takes two to tango when it comes to making a trade happen. And if a team doesn't want to give up the proper pieces, you don't go for it. Um, and that's what the Detroit Lions did. So um, I'm very happy with that. Um, as far as other teams go, man, oh, man, uh, the Packers went ahead and, and got Jordan Love. That's uh, interesting. Uh, fun, fun fact about that, uh, Aaron Rodgers is 36, which uh, Brett Favre was when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I've been saying for the last year or so that um, Aaron Rodgers is on a decline. Yeah, that's obvious. Uh, overthrowing players and all type of stuff like that. It's just He's just on a decline. Been through a lot of injuries, man. Um, so they went ahead and got Jordan Love. Is Jordan Love the next guy for the Packers? I don't know about that. Uh, but Jordan Love is a pretty good quarterback, so. Uh, you know, Matt LaFleur made it known that um, it was no way that he was letting love get past him. So, um, yeah, they got what they gave wanted. Um, but moving on to the second round. The second round, there's a lot of talent left. And the Detroit Lions went out and got a corner, but we need an edge rusher still badly. We still need defensive linemen. And A.J. Epineza has made it to the second round. <laughs> so if the Lions do get him, if they, they, they better get him. I swear they better get him. Um, that would be considered a, a pretty nice steal for them. Um, A.J. was expected to go in the late parts of the first round, mid to late parts of the first round. Um, hell of a player, man. Uh, just, you know, got a knack for getting turnovers and uh, getting to that quarterback, man. Has all the abilities as an edge rusher, nice size, everything that I want um, in an edge rusher. And for him and Trey Flowers to be opposite of each other, that would be pretty interesting. Um, it would be really fun to watch. But, 
you have Epinesa, you have Gross Models, uh, which is more of a uh, controlled uh, edge type of guy, set the edge type of guy to me. Um, you have, you know, Zach Bond, you have, uh, in, on a, the bottom end of that, you have Uche, um, but also there's still a possibility at running back where you have all of them available. You have JK, you have Swift, you have uh, Jonathan Taylor, which to me is the front runner for the Detroit Lions. Um, and I like Dobbins. Dobbins is, you know, he's quick. He's the quickest back to me. Um, but Jonathan Taylor is a bell cow back. Um, a lot of people concerned about how many snaps he had in college, whatever. Uh, <laughs> like I said, uh, uh, every football player's body is different, man. Uh, some players... Uh, you know, didn't really get those type of snaps in college and got to the league and couldn't stay healthy. So uh, we've drafted a few of those. So, like I said, you just don't know um, what you're going to get, man. I'm not going to go because he had two more, two, 200 more snaps than, than Dobbins did. I'm not about to freak out about that. Um, my thing is production. He was productive with, what, like two of the worst quarterbacks. <laughs> that you can have, man. You knew the ball was going to this guy and it was nothing that you can do about it. He still produced. And that's what the Detroit Lions need to do, produce. We need playmakers. We need somebody that's gonna impact the football game. So I would take Jonathan Taylor first, J.K. Dobbins, Swift, one of them guys, man. All three, you can't go wrong with the three, man. Uh, similar size, Jonathan Taylor probably most, um, you know, got the most tree trunkish legs, which I like. You know, I like backs that players don't like to tackle. Uh, you're not going to arm tackle him. So that's why I like Taylor, Taylor a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, with that said, those are also the options. Or they can go offensive uh, line, which, um, you know, is another possibility. But I'm in the, the bag for Epinesa. <laughs> simple as that. I want Epinesa. Some people like uh, Mottos, you know, but to me, Mottos is still kind of learning football. Um, I feel like Epinesa is the more polished guy um, when I watch both of those tapes, uh, courtesy of Vash Lombardi. Shout out to him. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely go with Ep Epinesa if it was me. What would we do in the third round? If you don't take a running back in the second, could you go after a running back in the third? Absolutely. Could you go after Cam Akers? Absolutely. <laughs> um, and at the same time, you can go for a quarterback, offensive lineman. Those options are still there. Um, question to leave in the comments. If the Detroit Lions had the opportunity to take um, a quarterback in the third round, would you do it? <laughs> would you do it and who would that quarterback be I gave a hint to y'all to who um, my selection would be at quarterback if we went that direction in the third round um, so let's let's hear who you guys would take around that time but they got to get somebody to come in here and groom behind Matthew Stafford man you just have to it's that time um, to do that so you know it is what it is um but as far as the second and third round tonight, man, I'm really going to be uh, paying attention to what we do here because this is right here is one of the most pivotal rounds. This is the Bob Quinn round. Bob Quinn did what he should have did and what was expected in the first round. So to me, you're not going to get that credit. Um, the second and third round picks, those are what's telling for me when it comes to Bob Quinn. Those picks are what's telling for me, man. Can you go out and get some impact players that's available? Or do you do the, the same same old Lions type of thing and go out and get somebody that's, you know, nobody wants? <laughs> so, um, you know, the obvious is in front of you. Do you take the obvious? How would you not take Epinesa if he's, well, if he's there at that pick at 35? I don't know how. Uh, but the Detroit Lions will find a way to not do it. So we'll see what happened with that situation, man. I'm so anxious 
uh, to see what they're going to do with this this, this uh, second and third round, man. I don't know, you know what to do with myself. And then you got the long day tomorrow starting at 12, I believe, uh, you know, for the later, later rounds. Um, and that's where you go and find the diamonds in the rough. Uh, so, which Bob Quinn has been pretty good at doing. You know, I got to give him that. Um, but it's the sensible picks, the second round picks, um, that he just has not been able to get strikes on, man. We went out and y'all remember T's Tabor. So, <laughs> um, got to make it happen. Got to do something solid. We kind of did well with Jelani Tavai. So, um, there's some hope. A lot of people, uh, didn't even know who he was, <laughs> A lot of people felt like the Lions shouldn't have got him at that position. Um, but according to the Lions, they had some guys hot on this trail that they was going to draft him. Uh, the Patriots and also other two other teams that were looking to draft him. So they took him. And it was a solid pick. I'm not even going to lie. I like Jelani Tavai a lot. He's better at middle linebacker than Jared Davis. Jared Davis never was a middle linebacker. He should have been on the outside from the beginning. Or he should have been on somebody's edge. <laughs> so, um, what will the Lions do with Jared Davis is also going to be another interesting thing. Um, be it all the linebackers we just signed. So, that's what kind of takes uh, Zach Bond out the picture to me. We got too many linebackers already. Um, so, you definitely go on defensive end, uh, D tackle, uh, which is slim. You know, Epinesa and Matos and those guys, those are the the other guys that were after Chase Young. Uh, but Epinesa is really, really, really solid. So I'll definitely do that. Let me know what you guys think, man. Uh, who should we go for in the second round? Uh, throw some names out there. Um, and let's let's just see what we get tonight, man. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely excited for the second round. Wow. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just example of how much talent is out there. Don't come to me with no receiver with the uh, second pick. We're not getting no receiver. <laughs> and we don't need a receiver with the second pick. That's not a need like we need a defensive end. Don't come to me with that <laughs> in the second round, man. Uh, that's later, later. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I don't know. Leave it, man. I'm just excited as you guys are. Uh, a lot of points can be made, but uh, as far as our third pick goes, I am absolutely, absolutely excited to see what this young man, an uh, excellent young man and a person, but also an excellent football player. Um, I am definitely excited about that. Uh, Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia keeps the thing going with the character players, but this guy here is a home run on talent coming out of college. Hasn't played an NFL snap yet, but coming out of college um, and, uh, you know, doing analysis on this guy, he he checks the boxes. So, <laughs> I mean, you got a double win there for me. So, um, yeah, um, you know, shout out to everybody that came into um, who came into the live stream last night, man. Uh, especially my man Jeff, man, for dropping the donations. I appreciate you. Bravo for stopping by. Got that video baking for you today. Bravo going to drop it about the uh, coronavirus. So be looking forward to that on my other channel. Um, other than that, man, I'll see you guys tonight. Get yourself prepared. Uh, get yourself a good meal ready. And um, we'll talk. I'll catch you guys later, man.